Welcome to Mulready Minutes with Oklahoma Insurance Commissioner Glenn Mulready. This is a podcast about insurance for insurance folks, risk managers, and business leaders. We'll dive deep and look at what is and isn't working, talk to leaders in the industry, and keep you informed on what's happening in Oklahoma and around the country. Welcome to another Mulready Minute podcast. We're excited today to have um, a, a guest who's uh, from the area who is involved in the day-to-day engagement with consumers, uh, battling rising insurance costs and covering homes, covering autos, that sort of thing. So a very, very practical guest uh, here with us today. So we're here to welcome Kayla Blunt, Principal Sorry. Advisor with uh, 317 Insurance Advisors. Welcome. Hi, thank you for having me. Of course. Good to have you here. So um, before we, uh, well, let me let me read that bio. Let me quickly read uh. that bio. Kayla is the Principal Advisor 317 insurance advisor, she began her insurance journey at Liberty Mutual, achieving national rankings and earning awards through hard work and dedication. July of 2019, she took a bold step, becoming the owner of 317 Insurance Advisors, an independent agency. As a believer in personalized solutions, Kayla and her team at 317 Insurance Advisors tailor coverage to each client's unique needs, emphasizing quality at competitive premiums. Guided by Colossians 317, Catch that, 317. They prioritize clients with values rooted in service and love inspired by their faith in Jesus. Beyond the business, Kayla actively engages with the community, contributing to organizations like the Oklahoma Sports Hall of Fame, Executive Council, and Edmund Summit Rotary. A graduate of UCO, she's been happily married to Jeff for over 17 years, sharing a love for country living, sports, travel, family time, and life church. So there's your bio. Thanks for being here with us. So... You and I had a conversation a while back um, just about some of the struggles and what was happening out there. And it was at that time I said, hey, we need to have you on. Let's talk about that uh, on the podcast. So before we get into that uh, and some of those things that you're seeing and experiencing, what your clients are seeing and experiencing, tell me about that. So as we just heard, 2019, you make a transition to uh, an independent agency. Tell me about that transition. What, uh, what motivated that? How did that go? Um, advice for others, maybe considering that, sort of other producers, other agents. Well, what motivated the switch was I had been with the company for about 13 and a half years, Liberty Mutual. They are a fabulous company. I enjoyed every moment there, but I got to see that there was a cycle in insurance. About every 10 years, you truly go through a cycle where you are the most competitive and then things happen, rates change, different companies come in and out of the market, and then all of a sudden you're not competitive anymore. And it was really hard just having one product. And so I was having to tell longtime clients, hey, you really need to shop me. I truly appreciate your loyalty, and I know that you have good coverage, but I know that you can find the exact same coverage for a better rate. Sometimes I'm not always the best salesman, I guess, in that scenario. (laughs) But it was true because we had ridden the insurance cycle. And when I had clients with me that had been there for over 10 years, I knew they were paying more than they should for insurance. So I started investigating the independent world and thought, hey, I can offer this same service, but have the benefits of multiple companies, so I made the transition. Got it. You, of course, don't know this, but my story is similar, except just a lot longer ago, but (laughs) 40, 35, 40 years ago, similar experience was with a a single company and then made that move to independent agent for those same exact Mm -hmm. reasons, you know, just having options uh, available for my, my clients. Okay, so then let's dive into... Uh, homeowners, maybe maybe our main topic here today. Tell me what you've been seeing over the last few years here in Oklahoma. Well, as I was visiting with Liz earlier, you know, I love this industry and it's always new. Something's always new. Something is always exciting. But these last 12 months have been an everyday put your seatbelt and hard hat on before you walk in the door. (laughs) It has just been a very volatile industry when it comes to rates and all the things changing. And homeowners don't actually understand because it feels to them that it happened overnight. So what would you like to tackle first, like the rates Sure. So, okay. So we'll, we'll tackle the rates. So we get calls in that clients are like, I received my new renewal and it has doubled. And it truly, in some cases, has doubled. I mean, we celebrate, we get our renewal list every day and we go through them as an agency. We look, we have a, a renewal team that goes through them. And this is crazy to say, but we celebrate if the rate increase is under 30%. <laughs> 
But the consumer doesn't know this because they don't look at this every day. Mm. And it's just making sure that they understand why the rates have changed. And so one thing that is in our society, everything is right now. And with insurance, what's hard to understand is insurance is not immediately immediate when it comes to the results of things like rates. Insurance is about 18 to 24 months behind when it comes to having the proper rates for the needs at this time. So the renewals that folks are getting now actually started perpetuating a couple of years ago. If you think about during COVID, you know, Things are rocking along and the country shuts down. People are not driving. People are not traveling. So insurance companies to, you know, as a goodwill gesture, froze the rates for an insurance cycle. Some companies did it for six months. Some did all the way up to a year. But as seasoned insurance agents, some of us were like, oh. That one's going to come back. <laughs> because, you know, companies don't leave money on the table. Well, then you think, okay, well, how? what was the last time something like this happened? How did they progress? Well, when's the last time we've been through a pandemic? You know, there's no back data to go through on that. So you've got your pause of rates, then you have your pandemic, and then a whole host of things happened out of that. You know, you have your... Parts. So say you, you have a car accident and you take your car in to have it repaired. Generally, you're in a fender bender. You take it to the dealership. They say, you know, it's going to take 10 days. You get a rental car for 10 days. You get your car back and you go on your way. Well, during COVID, there was a, a real extreme supply issue. So your car would go in the shop and um, Glenn, we appreciate you bringing your business here. Um, generally, this takes 10 days. We're probably going to have your car for 45 or 60 days. So, you know, if your car is not drivable, what are you going to do for rental? So you've got costs that expanded exponentially that wasn't planned. And then you've got inflation, you know, factor in inflation. Again, that doesn't happen overnight seeing it on the insurance side because they pay the bills, the insurance company gets the data in, they look over the data, and then they figure out, wow, we paid out a lot more than we took in, so we need to adjust the rates. Yeah. So the things that are impacting us this very second right now actually perpetuated you know, two, three years ago. And the consumers don't know that. And that's something that important that they need to understand is why some of the rate increases are happening now. And then it feels like it's sudden, but it really wasn't a sudden action. Yeah. But they're feeling it now. They are feeling mm -hmm. it now. Yes. And I'm assuming, because you, you don't just represent one company. Correct. You have multiple companies. Mm -hmm. um, just confirming, you're seeing the same thing with most all of your companies. So there's, there's not uh, an outlier there that's not being impacted by this. Uh, correct. But, you know. Insurance is an equal opportunity offender. If you haven't received your renewal, it is coming. You will be offended. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, and we do have a very vibrant um marketplace here in Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. um, I know I've said it many times, but we have, we have over 100 companies licensed to write auto. We have over 100 companies licensed to write homeowners. So it is a competitive market out there, um, but it does take effort to shop around. And mm -hmm. um, what other um, advice do you give to your clients in, in lessening the impact of that? What other things can they do? Well, that's a twofold question. One, we want to keep it a competitive market. So we want these carriers to be able to have the authorities to take rate increases so they can stay competitive to stay in this market. We talk to clients. And stay and, in business. <laughs> and, right, stay in business. And it's like you have to look at it from the perspective of numbers. Do we want to be in the position of the folks in California or Florida where they have two options? So now your premium choices are A and B, and they're both skyrocketing. Or do you want to be where you have 20 choices, the, the premiums are a little bit painful, but you have 20 different options. So we have to make sure that we look at it from that perspective, too. And then we do want to make sure that we're being competitive for our clients. So once we get the renewals in, the way our agency processes it is we take a look, look at all the benefits on the policy. We have conversations with the clients because sometimes their needs change. And in order to shave off some of the rates, we want to make sure that all these extra benefits that you have added on here are ones that you still need today and yeah. something that Doesn't you want to have sense. on your policy. Um, another way to mitigate the rate is we can look at deductibles. You know, if you have a little bit more financial skin in the game, Hopefully you'll be a little bit more careful as well, especially in auto insurance and auto. Um, but if you raise your deductibles, you have more skin in the game. And so that actually helps mitigate some of the rate and bring your premiums down. So let's talk about that piece too, because that is, I, th I think, 
important. What is your advice to um, your clients as far as filing a claim or not mm-hmm. filing a claim or making that decision when to file a claim or when not to? So I'm going to answer this in a long way. I'm thinking way. of this from a homeowner yes. standpoint. So, yeah. so the best thing to do is to be proactive to have, hopefully have to not file a claim. You want to be a good steward of your property. Be proactive on the maintenance. Make sure you're walking your property every month. If you see an issue that may be getting ready to occur or just has started to occur, jump on it immediately. You know, when you wait to handle a problem, generally the problem gets worse and it's more expensive, more time consuming. So be a good steward of your property. The biggest thing is to always have a good relationship with your agent. If you have a loss, we always tell our clients, please make me one of the first points of contact. Obviously, if it's not a fire or if you've got water running in the house, you'd fire, call 911, water, make sure you get the water turned off. But when you have a loss on your property, have that relationship with the agent so you can call and walk through that with the agent so they can tell you the best way to handle it. What we like to advise our clients is, you know, make sure that the damage is stopped so we can mitigate the loss process and then get someone out to do an estimate on the repairs. Mm -hmm. So a big misnomer is, and a little bit of this may not be popular, but a little bit of this is on the insurance companies. You see commercials and you see this, something crazy happened and the message that's been sent by the insurance is, look at how crazy this is, we covered it. Everything's covered. Just if something happens on your property, or just give us a call and file a claim. Well, that's really not what needs to happen. You know, insurance is not a maintenance policy. Insurance is for the big catastrophic losses. So why we like to tell our clients, please make us the first point of contact. I want to walk my client through it and say, hey, this may sting a little bit. It's going to have a little bit of a financial impact, but it's something that's not going to truly financially devastate you. You know, it may be in your best interest to not file a claim. And I would never tell a client not to file a claim. If, if this is actually going to devastate you and, and, and hurt, we need to file a claim because that's what insurance is for. But if it's something little that, you know, we can walk through it and you can get the funds to take care of it, it generally is in their best interest to take care of it out of pocket. Yeah, because wisdom is at times, <clears throat> that's what our advice always is as well, is to get the claim evaluated. Mm-hmm. Don't actually file a claim figure out what it's going to cost. Is it at your deductible? Is it barely above your deductible? Mm-hmm. Is it less than your deductible? That doesn't help you to have a claim filed against your on your record. Correct. Um, major ones, absolutely. Of course, you're going to file that. But then that's our, our advice as well is to make make that contact with the agent. Nowadays, some of those file, uh, claims can be filed directly mm-hmm. with the company. And um, that concerns me sometimes that they're not evaluating the wisdom of filing that claim. So again, you have insurance in place to cover that. But Let's make wise decisions in that to, to protect you down the road. Mm-hmm. So good. How about um, you're in the Oklahoma City, Edmond area. Um, have you noticed anything? Are you hearing anything from a, a regional perspective as far as what we're seeing here, increasing um, premiums and all of that? Any, any differences that you see regionally at all? Not generally. It is across the board with pretty much every company because Almost every company was impacted by all the things that went on from 2020 to where we sit today. So we're seeing the rate increases with almost every carrier. Yeah. And um, we earlier in another uh, podcast had someone on, on on reinsurance. That's just another factor that happened that the average person doesn't know that. But so much capital um, left the reinsurance marketplace, which then just drove up costs for mm-hmm. And that's what the insurance companies buy is reinsurance. It's insurance for insurance companies, but another big factor. And that inflation just can't be overstated, too, that we have seen. I know I personally experienced it when we replaced our roof, uh, just, you know, six, wasn't even six months ago. Um, the- well, we felt it a little bit. Um, the inflation, we actually felt that a little bit heavier in the car market first because of the way that the the used cars prices and the the parts for cars, we actually felt it a little bit more in the auto industry before it hit the homeowner industry. Yeah. Are you seeing much? Uh, so I've communicated out to the insurance companies um, that when they are making um, any major underwriting guideline changes that I want to know about it to give me a heads up. In fact, I got an email this morning uh, about one having to do with a minimum deductible mm-hmm. uh, for wind and hail. Uh, <clears throat> that's the type of thing they don't necessarily have to file with our office, that sort of underwriting guideline change. But I like to know about it so we can keep our finger on the pulse of what's happening in the marketplace. What are you seeing as far as 
underwriting guideline changes um, as far as what companies will write or won't write or how they're rating those? Well, I will tell you the agents feel the same way. If if it's coming down the pike, I want to know as soon as it's available so we can make adjustments, prepare our conversations, see what's out there on the rest of the market. My my biggest pet peeve as an insurance agent is getting a call and going, I'm not sure if you've noticed, which means in layman's terms, it has already happened. <laughs> So we agree with you on that. So right now, the standard deductible is 1%. There have been a comp- 1% of the on, on homeowner's insurance, right? Mm-hmm. So 1%, and when you see a percentage on your policy, it's based on your dwelling. So if you have your home insured for 200000 you have a 1% deductible, your deductible is 2%. So right now, the standard is- 2000 I'm sorry. I'm sorry. 2000, yes, yeah. 2000 Yes, 2000 1%. Math is not my specialty. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, so right now, the standard in Oklahoma is 1%. Um, we have had a couple of companies that have changed recently to 2%. And there are rumors in the insurance world that there may be a company looking at 3%. I personally have not seen anything come across my desk with 3%. Um, but the deductible is one of the biggest ways that the insurance companies can help mitigate what they're paying out mitigate the premium. And so that's passed on to almost force homeowners to, to be a better steward of their policy. Because if you do have a wind or hail loss and it's under that amount, you're going to be taking care of it out of pocket because it doesn't make sense to file a claim if it's under the deductible threshold. So yeah, we're seeing a lot too, because in, in, here in Oklahoma, you know, out West, we've got our wildfires and mm. coast, you got the coastal storms. We, we have, we have roof claims. We have a lot of yes. roof claims with wind yes. and hail here and so i know we're, we're seeing some changes in those um uh, having to do with ages of roofs and what they will write you know i don't think i've seen anyone who won't write a home the roof's over 10 years old but they maybe they won't write replacement costs so the market sort of the underwriting guidelines have definitely tightened up insurance companies are becoming more picky of what they want on the books and it's really hard to balance in oklahoma because a lot of companies once your roof is past 10 years old you are no longer eligible for the coverage of replacement cost it then switches to actual cash value um There are some companies that are actually electing not to write business if your roof is over 10 years old. So when you quote the the client over the gamut of carriers, if their roof is over 10 years old, then that actually narrows the scope that we're able to provide the coverage through. Um, They're tightening the guidelines on um, like... Um, what's the the word like foliage around the home like trees they don't want things touching the home they don't want things hanging over the roof um, some companies have um, dogs that they don't want to insure certain types or certain breeds of dogs they don't want to insure and there's some companies that are now taking aerials of the home so if you have lots of debris in the yard debris can be considered what's called an attractive nuisance, you know, bugs, different things. Um, Debris can catch on fire. So some companies are being very particular. If you have debris in your yard, it's something that you take care of the problem before they will look at ensuring the risk. Got it. So some are even looking at pets. So maybe I Mm -hmm. could find a company that's going to require me to get rid of my cat. Can we do that? Is that possible? Um, I will do my best to <laughs> shop it to my make sure. My wife, I should say. <laughs> yes. Sorry, couldn't, couldn't resist that joke. But you did just mention something that's critically important for folks. Understanding the difference between replacement cost and actual cash value. Mm-hmm. Sounds like just some insurance terminology, but critically important in what a claim paid out on a roof would be of replacement cost versus ACV, actual cash. And it could be the older your roof is, the more dramatic the cost difference can be. And when we talk to consumers, we try to break it down as easy as possible. So you have two different buckets. You have your replacement cost bucket and you have your actual cash value bucket. And you have to look at the line items that are subtracted. So with replacement cost, you have the amount of the claim, you minus out the deductible, and then what's left of that is what's dispersed out to you to make the repairs or replacement. When you have actual cash value, it's notated on your policy as ACV, actual cash value. They factor in one additional line item. You have your amount of the claim, then you minus out your deductible, and then you minus out your depreciation. And then that's what's left to disperse out to repair or replace. And depreciation is based on years. So the further along you go in years of the age of that item, the more depreciation is going to be factored in. So when it comes to roof, 
on average, if you have a comp roof, so your architectural shingles, your three tab shingles, with most carriers, you're looking at about a 3% a year. So if you go 10 years, you're looking at not only your deductible, but 30% depreciation value. Yeah. Well, Kayla, as we sort of start to close this out, any other thoughts, advice for folks on homeowners insurance or uh, in dealing with agents, anything at all you want to add? Yes, I bet I say this word 50 times a day. Be a good steward of your home. That is a lot of the times the biggest financial purchase someone will make. Be proactive in the maintenance. Make sure you are taking care of your baby. Make sure you have a good relationship with your insurance agent. You know, if something goes awry, call your insurance agent. This is what happened. This is what this is what happened. What do you think I should do from here? And then we can walk you through the steps. Yeah. Well, and I'll add one other thing that, you know, I think many people, as because I hear from them, they think that I control the rates <gasps> in Oklahoma, that, that uh, the you insurance have a wand, commissioner right? yeah, is, uh, is increasing the rates and he's approved this and approved that. And, and uh, a lot of folks don't know that that is not the case, that we here in Oklahoma, as in many states, let the market work, the competitive market work and the market determines what the rates are. We really don't have an ability to control those rates unless they are uh, unfairly discriminatory um, or, or, adequ- or not adequate. We want to make sure those companies are staying in business as well. So uh, anyways, that that is operates quite a bit differently than I think most folks uh, understand that process. So Kayla, thank you for coming on and enlightening us on what's happening in Oklahoma with the homeowners market and uh, in the agent world. So thank you again. Thank you. Okay, that's another successful Mulready Minute podcast. Uh, We'll look for you next time. If you found this episode informative, please subscribe and share with your colleagues. Visit oid.ok.gov slash podcast. Let us know what topics you would like to hear about on this podcast. Until next time, take care from the Oklahoma Insurance Department.